Pandominium and mayhem have erupted across Pakistan right after the news that Imran Khan has been arrested spread across the country. As I speak, the house of the core commander of Lahore has been overrun by PTI supporters. And across the city, as well as in various parts of the country, the symbols of the military and the symbols of the government are being attacked and vandalized. At the same time, there are several police cars that have been set alight, put on fire. Why was Imran Khan arrested at this point in time? As you know, in a few months ago, there was an attempt to assassinate Imran Khan. At the same time, while his government was out of power, over 100 different kinds of cases had been opened up against him. Earlier this year, Imran Khan's government was overthrown in a vote of no confidence. The public as a whole did not really accept this as a legitimate process or even a constitutional process, given that this is the first time in Pakistan's history that a government was overthrown by a vote of no confidence. I think this was somewhat to be expected. But also, I think, and perhaps more importantly, Imran Khan continues not just to maintain his support, but after he has been ousted from power, his support has only grown. The recent case of him being arrested will no doubt further increase his support across Pakistan. Why was he arrested just now? It appears that for the last month or so, the government and the PTI were almost moving very close to a dialogue, to a discussion, whereby, whereby they would be able to settle when the provincial and national elections would be held. But it appears that Imran Khan, in response to Shabazz Sharif, saying that Imran Khan was attacking the military in order to get political uh, or criticizing the military in order to get political, greater political support. Imran Khan came out with a series of tweets against General Faisal Naim, pretty much accusing him of uh, you know, organizing a plot to assassinate and kill Imran Khan. And it seems right after those tweets that as Imran Khan was going to the court, he was picked up by a heavy battalion of rangers and that has caused uh, people to come out in, onto the streets across Pakistan. The role of the left in this situation, of course, is to make people aware and to help them understand that these uh, you know, problems, for instance, this uh, rising cost of living and unemployment and stagflation, the lack of growth, all of this is connected to neoliberal capitalism. It isn't the product of this or that regime, although these regimes are unable to, to handle the crisis precisely because all of them are basically essentially tied to a neoliberal framework. The crisis is of neoliberal capitalism. One cannot get out of this crisis merely by switching between PMLN and PTI or military dictatorships or what have you, because these are structural problems. There are, these are not merely problems of this or that policy, but rather problems of the way in which Pakistan fits into the international division of labor in the larger global political economy of neoliberal capitalism. Pakistan is unable to compete in the race, in that particular way, in the rat race created by global capitalism, and it is paying the cost for being unable to compete. Just as capitalism creates winners and losers within its own borders, it will create an entire underclass of people that want to get employed but cannot find employment. In much the same way, capitalism also creates winners and losers amongst various countries of the world. Today, Pakistan is facing a situation where it is becoming the 
proletarian backyard of international capital, its only competitive advantage seems to be to be able to produce people who will go abroad and work for international capitalism. We are sending abroad over 800,000 people a year. That seems to be the only role left in the international political order for Pakistan to produce laborers that can be used to build all the great products that people use all over the world, but products which we in Pakistan or the working people in Pakistan will never be able to afford.